Pretty, pretty no, I just <laughs> football teams here. I don't know, maybe one of the buildings find out. Right? If everyone could take their seats, I'd like to call the meeting to order. There. I'd like to welcome everybody and say thank you for coming tonight. And I'd like to start off with a salute to the flag and a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Conti? I'm here. Mr. Conti? Here. Ms. Cusinelli? Here. Mr. Panucci? Here. Ms. Souter? Here. Mr. Reed? Here. Ms. Cantilla? Here. Mr. Edwards? The New Jersey Open Public's Meeting Law was, was enacted to ensure the right of the, of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Bricktown Township Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be posted on the Administration Office Bulletin Board, the official district website and channel BTV20, and sent to the Asbury Park Press, the Brick Times, the Star Ledger, and Municipal Clerk's Office. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. I'd like to start out with um, our reports from our high school students, Corey Esposito from Brick Township High School. Good evening, board members. I'm Corey Esposito, SGA president, representing Brick Township High School, continuing to promote character education and school spirit. This month, the Interact Club donated 20 bags of clothing to the Visitation Relief Center to continue help with the Hurricane Sandy recovery. Interact and Palace Clubs hosted the annual Special Needs Holiday Dance, December 6th, with a fantastic turnout. The National Honor Society induction was held December 12th. Congratulations to all new members. The basketball team had a free throw contest on December 16th, raising $3,500 for a Brick Memorial family. Just an hour ago, we hosted a bonfire out on the softball field in honor of the football team winning the state championships. Congratulations on the Feeding Colts Neck 2615 for the Central Jersey Group 4 state championships. First time in almost 20 years. It was heavily attended by 4,000 fans and was a great moment for not only the football team, but the students, teachers, and alumni. To fundraise for their state rings, the football team will be hosting a holiday dance this Saturday, December 21st. Thank you for letting me speak tonight, and happy holidays, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Sean Millay from Brick Memorial. Hello, members of the board, teachers, administrations, and citizens of Brick alike. Before I begin, I would just like to quickly apologize for my absence at the last meeting I had prior obligations to attend to. Um, to start, I'll talk about what marked the beginning of December at Brick Memorial, which was the door decorating competition um, among the school clubs. It's traditionally a fun event that makes the school look festive and requires the clubs to collectively and creatively establish a quote unquote pretty door. The club that took first received a small trophy and the rest received a smile and um, a good luck next time. After this, just last weekend, our school hosted The Night Thoreau Spent in Jail, a classic play about Henry David Thoreau. It was very successful and I can vouch on behalf of this quote being as I was there and it was very well done. Uh, over 15 families received Christmas gifts and food this year because of the gifts that were graciously donated in honor of Brick Memorial by the school staff. Uh, they'll certainly be having a Merry Christmas, one we at Brick Memorial uh, think they are entitled to. Brick Memorial's very own Taylor Smith won first place in the Voice of Democracy competition, followed by Alyssa Rossetti and Ryan, Ryan Kruinski. Taylor will be going on to states on January 25th, and she was the first person to win at a county level from Brick Memorial High School. Last week, Key Club had its gingerbread social, uh, a gathering of students, staff, family, and friends for a night of fun and gingerbread housemaking with the recycled milk cartons from the school's cafeteria. Last night was Brick Memorial's chorus concert, which was the buzz of today's conversations throughout the school due to its success. 
Yesterday was also the first day of Brick Memorial's new film club. Together we watch Edward Scissorhands and plan to discuss it after we return from the winter break. Today we had the ugly sweater Christmas party in the cafeteria for all club members to come join and eat pizza. Evidence of such can be seen here <laughs> on my body. Um, and finally, auditions are being held for the new musical, We Will Rock You, which is scored with songs of the famous band Queen. Brick Memorial will be the first high school in America to perform this musical. With that being said, I would like to wish everyone a happy and safe holiday break, a Merry Christmas that entails lots of presents, and a break that is spent with those who matter most, our friends and family. Um, I look forward to seeing you all in the new year. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next up from uh, Vets Middle is Peter Palmieri. Good evening. I am Peter Palmieri, the publicist at Veterans Memorial Middle School. The events that have occurred at Vets are Holiday Jubilee, Linda Paul Concert, and the Holiday Giving Tree. Our school teams are doing excellent this season, and Mrs. Abramo is keeping up the Cougar Chronicle to inform our students. Mm -hmm. The Holiday Jubilee was a great success that the VMMS Student Council proudly ran on Monday, December 16th. Many activities entertained the VMMS families and students in our winter wonderland at the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Murdoch, Chorus and Strings Director, worked with Lake Riviera Middle School to attract 300 people at this fundraising concert. The two groups raised around $1,200 for the Jersey Shore Animal Center, and we thank you for a great turnout. The Holiday Giving Tree has helped many families at VMMS. Currently, Mrs. Suzo is contacting families in need this holiday season. Our school students and she are proudly supplying people with dinner and gifts for the children. This season for sports has been challenging at Vets. We wait to use our beautiful new floors. Our gym will be open January 2nd. The boys and girls basketball team home opener for the new gym is January 7th against, against Lake Riv. The girls A team is 2-2 two and, two and the B team 4-0. The boys basketball A team is 2-2 two and, two and the B team is also 4-0. Our wrestling team is 3-0, and they are looking forward to a try match over winter recess. I was at the last match against Toms River North, and it was quite a great one. Old Bridge will be in this match over break, and they are undefeated. We wish all the teams good luck in their seasons. Another event includes a talent show, which is an unscheduled date. Thank you for your attention, and happy holidays from the Vet Student Council. Thank you. Next up from Drum Point, Madison McIntosh and Jake Lux. Good evening. Thank you to our superintendent, Dr. Yuzinski, and the entire Board of Education for allowing us to present this evening. This is Madison McIntosh, and I am Jake Lux. We are fifth grade student council representatives here to tell you a little, about, little bit about what all the wonderful and educational experiences that have been going on at Drum Point Elementary School. In the month of November, thank you. In the month in the month of November, thanks to Drum Point Election Day Committee, all students were able to vote on Election Day. Students voted for Governor of Brick Township Mayor Election. Every student after voting received an I Voted Kids Vote 2 sticker, and the results of our election were announced on the Daily Dish, our fabulous news program. Drum Point joined communities across the nation to celebrate American Education Week during the week of November 18th through the 22nd. This annual event honors students, recognizes the professionalism and dedications of teachers, support staff, and other educators. And thanks to parents and members of the community who helped our students succeed. Parents were able to visit classrooms to see their children learning and student council ambassadors greeted them. Drum Point's One Committee, which stands for One in Need, created the Baby Brigade for the months of November and December. All students and staff were invited to bring one baby photo of themselves to be displayed in the front hallway. The cost was $1 per picture, with all donations benefiting when. The pictures were exhibited in a super cute baby display. 
Throughout the holiday season and all year long at Drum Point, we consider the art of giving as a wonderful gift to teach our students. We feel that helping others, children can, re can learn responsibility, build character and citizenship, and discover the special joys of doing or giving something special. Once again, Drum Point has been honored the, with the Spirit of Giving Award from the Food Bank of Monarch County and Ocean Counties, 7th Annual Hunger Challenge. We are proud to share that Drum Point collected over 2,000 pounds of food this year. We officially broke our record from the past three years. Way to go, Drum Point! Drum Point's Early Act Club has been hard at work on special projects as well to benefit our community. Drum Point students wrote letters for the 2013 Macy's Believe campaign benefiting Make-A-Wish Foundation. For each letter received throughout December 24th, Macy's will donate $1 to Make-A-Wish up to $1 million. We were able to send over 500 letters to help this important cause. We are also participating in the Bedtime Story Pajama Drive program this year. We are collecting pajamas for people who are in need of a steadily winter pair of pajamas. The Scholastic Book Company will donate a book for each pair of pajamas collected. We will be collecting donations from December 9th until December 20th. The Drum Point Student Council has gotten into high gear. Last month, all elected representatives and alternates received special pins that will be worn on meeting days and for certain special events. We also created our own mission statement. Check it out on the bulletin board by the main office. This year, our fifth graders and fourth graders during recess, teacher appreciation, Invention Week, Daily Dish articles and announcements, and American Education Week ambassadors. The council also is considering sponsoring a fifth grade teacher assistant for a day or half a day, a special address day, and the developing program to be a buddy slash tutor slash reader to younger students. Our first character education lunch was held on the first Friday of December. Each homeroom teacher selected two students that they felt have exhibited excellent character to have a lunch with Miss McConnell and Miss Gibbs. Every student who attended the luncheon received a special Drum Point Has Great Character pen. Just last week, our chorus held the winter concert here at Brick Township High School. Over 85 students sang their hearts out to a packed audience. It was a fantastic showcase of our talented students. Thank you for the opportunity to share something wonderful and exciting highlights of our school. Have a wonderful evening. That was adorable. That was adorable. Awesome. Very informative. <laughs> Cute kids. I'd like to take this opportunity um, first to acknowledge Chief Berquist and Captain Mazza. Um, I'd like to, on behalf of the board, thank the police department for their constant assistance, help, and cooperation with everything that we do. We appreciate it and thank you very much. I have a proclamation that I'd like to read congratulating the Brick Township Dragons football team. 
Whereas athletic competition enhances the moral and physical development of young people, preparing them for the future by instilling in them the value of teamwork, importing a desire for success, and developing a sense of fair play and competition. And whereas the Brick Township Dragon football team achieved an overall winning season with a record of nine wins, three losses, and whereas the Brick Township Dragon football team won their seventh sectional state championship December 7, 2013 with a 26-15 victory against Colts Neck High School. And whereas by virtue of their accomplishments on the field, the team has brought great pride to their parents, their friends, their school, and their community. Now, therefore, on behalf of the Brick Township Board of Education, we ask the Brick Township School community to join us in honoring the Brick Township High School football coach, Rob Dahl, and the 2013 Brick Township High School Dragon football team as Central Jersey Group 4 State Sectional Champions. indulge me just a second um, anyone that knows me knows how important this program and how near and dear it is to my heart I have to tell you how proud I am of the Brick Dragons when I think about the Brick Dragon football team for many years I was involved and the word brotherhood comes to mind somewhere on that field with all of those practices and all that sweating and all those drills and max outs and, and, and everything that your coaches have you do, you learn these life lessons. I don't know how it's done and, and I, I don't know how your coaches accomplish it, but they do. And I have to tell you that throughout the probably past 15 years, I've sat in many backyards and, and many parties and occasions and I've sat with many alumni, and I see some of them out there tonight, over many years. And as I sat with them, they started to tell stories. And the stories, no matter whether you played this year, or you played last year, or you played 25 years ago, they were the same stories. And the character and the integrity that has been displayed by the men that have come through this program is just amazing. I try to tell people how special this program is and how it was created and how it's been carried through. I think Mr. Philippone, through all of the banquets that I've listened to your speeches, you've always talked about that green line and that green line that you as players now are all a part of and you now stand behind all those alumni that met you at the gate and at that state game and were there to cheer you on. And you're there now, and we as, as the community who came out to see you on that day, we're so proud of you. And by virtue of all of those people that were there, I hope you know how much we support you and how much we think of you. And I just want to tell you one more time, and I know you've heard it a million times, but congratulations and thank you. At this time, Chief Berquist, can you come up and help me give out some proclamations? And Mr. Twalty, if you could come up and help me. Oh, you're yeah. already here. <laughs> Rick. 
I'd like to also recognize our cheerleaders and our band for the spirit and the support that they've given all of our teams. And I'd like to also recognize our athletic directors. They are spectacular, spectacular people. And thank you very, very much for your support. At this time, Mr. Filippone, do you want to? I think we're going to ask them all. Yes. You want to, where's the roses? Okay. The boys could just stay here for a second. Stay How are you? We'll call like, the good, good. Down. good. How are you? Could we please have our cheerleaders come down? Yeah. You can come through here, guys. Here. And then stay here in the front. Girls, after the gentleman give you, if you stay here for a picture, please. Oh. <laughs> Just stay right in the front there, lined up. Right behind them. Oh, oh. Coach, you want to get over there with them? And then just remain there so you get a picture. All the boys. Oh, you guys, come on. going to do it off the camera so we can put it on the screen. Coach, you talk to them, please. They're all there with the yeah, one that said, you know, had the uh, reading program and the guys at the ties that are going to the front. 
totaled up all the reading programs. Yeah, I don't know why. Came to 800,000 and they tailed yeah, yeah. the math program. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 you're good. Let, let Eddie get involved. Yeah, yeah. Eddie's, Eddie's Eddie 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 Everybody just remain one second, just stand there. Just move over a second, Mr. Palti, please. Microphone. Mr. Dahl. I have this distinct I have the distinct uh, pleasure of giving you an award which you so richly deserve. Uh, I have known Rob for a lot of years and he's he's like a son. So Rob, on behalf of the Board of Education and Central Jersey Group 4 Football 2013, congratulations. Uh, just very briefly, I want to thank um, certainly all of you guys for the efforts that you put in. Girls, nobody knows that the girls came to me, what, a week ago? And asked about the, the bonfire because they thought that you guys deserved to, uh, to have some recognition. So in all year, everything that you do for the, for the guys and for the school and you'll continue to do. Um, Mr. Hanchin, thank you for your support and everything that led to um, these young men and coaches being able to do what they were able to do. To the coaches, you are, and I've worked with some hard working groups of coaches. You are the hardest working group of coaches that I, I've seen in a long time. And the result of that is a state championship and bringing brick football back to where it's supposed to be. And Rob Dahl, uh, you know, Rob, I can't say, you, I've told you personally, I'll uh, say it publicly. We are so proud of what you do, not only as a football coach, but what you do to turn these young men into, into really true gentlemen of character and respectful guys, uh, because that's what's going to take you, as you move forward in life, that's what's going to be important, okay? Not many of you are going to be professional football <laughs> players, but you're going to be professionals in life. And those lessons that you learn from Coach Dahl and from the other people on the staff, um, take those with you because that's what's going to, going to get you through the tough times. And uh, we are so proud and so happy. Um, the school has been kind of alive for the last week or so. Thank God we have a vacation. It'll calm everything down, and then you can get back to work and try to defend your title. Congratulations. 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 Have a good Christmas, all right? Merry Christmas. Donovan is going to do the presentation. Mm -hmm. Tell them that they don't have to stay, that they can leave. Mm -hmm. Tell them they don't have to stay because they have to study to make school. <laughs> Any students that want to leave the meeting and go home and study, you're certainly welcome. Am <laughs> <laughs> I still considered a student? No. <laughs> <laughs> 
Next up, I'd like to call Mr. Barisi to do our performance target of the district. Hello. How do I follow that up? <laughs> Put the numbers guy after the, uh, the sports victory. Okay. Uh, so I'm here to uh, report on um, something called uh, school performance targets. Uh, and I'm going to explain, if you don't know what that is, a, a little bit about what that, that is. And this is for uh, last school year, because uh, that's what we've most uh, recently received the test data back from. Uh, beginning in the 2012-2013 school year, uh, all schools uh, in the state of New Jersey started being held accountable for something called school performance targets. Um, it is a change from uh, the original way the NCLB law was written uh, way back in the early 2000s. Um, and without getting too much, uh, too deep into it, essentially uh, all the schools in New Jersey were responsible for hitting either a statewide 90% proficiency uh, rate in every single subgroup and school-wide population, or to decrease their partially proficient um, uh, numbers in half over six years. So it was one of those two goals depending upon where your school started off uh, in the baseline year, uh, which was the 10-11 school year, that was the baseline. So, we'll start with the NJ Ask. Uh, first, a little bit about the test in case you don't know. It's administered to all third through eighth grade students. Uh, all third through eighth grade students are required to take the test. The assessed areas are mathematics and language arts literacy, uh, except in fourth and eighth grade where students also take a uh, test in science. And uh, it's noteworthy that to say that last school year was the first year that um, the students were assessed in the uh, brand new and more rigorous Common Core standards. So the the vehicle was the same, was the same. The NJ ask the test is the same, but what they were being tested on was different. Um, so that uh, you know factors into things certainly. So, uh, well, first, uh, we're breaking this presentation down into the three levels, elementary, middle, and high school. Um, and elementary school covers grades three through five. Uh, those are the tested grades. Um, so it all started last year when we began our uh, curriculum audit. And, and uh, some of you may remember me standing up here um, with uh, a couple other uh, members of the administrative staff talking about um, the work that we did on every single uh, course in grade kindergarten uh, through 12th. Um, it was a very comprehensive audit. And what we found in the grade uh, three through five span was that there was some lack of a standards alignment due to the new Common Core standard uh, implementation. Um, there were many lessons within the curriculum that didn't addressed uh, uh, mastery objectives, and the assessments that were built into the programs didn't fully match student outcomes. And in spite of all that, in terms of results, we had better than half of the subgroups district-wide, and for all the, the subgroups that were identified at all the elementary schools, uh, meet or exceed their English language arts targets, and we had better than 80% of the subgroups meet or exceed their progress targets in mathematics. So. After you take that information, what you really want to look at is what are we doing? What are we doing with that information? If, if we start with the curriculum audit, when I stood up here last school year, I said that the curriculum audit was the diagnosis. And then from that comes the prescription, which is the plan of action. What, what are you going to do about it? And I broke it down into two components. Essentially, you have programmatic initiatives and uh, professional staff initiatives. On, ooh, on the right-hand side, <laughs> under the professional staff initiatives, um, I broke it down into to two further to two pieces. We have um, things that are more process oriented. So we have first the mandates of Achieve New Jersey, which is all the things that um, the administrators and educators are faced with with the new evaluation system handed down from the uh, state. And um, the re directly related to that, we have our eye observation uh, component, which is helping us deal with uh, the new uh, observation mandates and allowing uh, administrators to look at uh, very uh, thin slices of teachers' lessons, and it's giving, allowing teachers to have instant feedback on um, you know, what administrators are seeing in their classrooms. Uh, we also have walkthrough teams at every single one of our uh, school buildings where um, groups of administrators and teachers are going around, around in a non-evaluative uh, fashion and looking for um, 
places where they can improve, generally speaking, in the building, to make the building better and then therefore make the district better. And all of those things feed into that little circle there. Um, we have at every single school, K through 12, and you're going to see this the same on all these charts, which is why my first slide here is a little longer than the other ones will be. But we have data analysis teams at every single school that look at um, testing data or data that's coming from the walkthrough teams. Um, and looking at the information and making recommendations and passing those recommendations up to the school improvement teams, which take that information in and um, put together action plans at a school level for how to improve. Um, those feed into our professional learning communities at all the schools where teachers have an opportunity to meet and discuss and better their instructional practice. And all of those three things really feed the Professional Development Academy, which, um, which has started this school year, which is a place for teachers to see uh, professional development workshops both from in-house, uh, from employees and, and out of district, people coming in offering professional development uh, opportunities for staff members. So that's the staff side and, and as you're going to see that's the same in elementary, middle, and high school. It's the left side where things, um, there's some uh, continuity uh, K through 12, some things that are exactly the same and then some things that are unique to the different grade bands. First we have, uh, in, in terms of things that are the same, we have common assessments now. Um, really K through 12. Um, it looks different at different levels but at the elementary level um, we have uh, common assessments built into the journeys and the math expressions uh, programs which are new this year. Uh, we have the 1.9 million dollar technology infusion um, which is uh, outfitting our uh, schools with iPads and uh, Chromebooks and MacBook Airs and just about anything, Promethean tables and uh, just about anything you can think of. Um, we're, we're getting our hands on it, we're training teachers on it, we're getting into the hands of students. Um, we have the on-course lesson planner which allows teachers to do their lesson plans digitally and uh, to tag standards that they are covering in their lessons right there uh, on the computer so that they and their administrators can see um, how much certain standards are being addressed in their classroom. We have uh, Performance Plus, uh, which if, if you were here uh, last year you saw me talking about Performance Plus, which helps us keep track of all the uh, assessment data uh, part of the mandates from Achieve NJ is um, student growth objectives, so that system is helping us keep track of all that information. And as of um, a few weeks ago, we had uh, something like uh, 44,000, I think it was, assessments loaded into the system from the 10,000 students uh, uh, of Bricktown there. So it's uh, it's certainly getting used, and, and teachers are reporting on that, and I've, I've got nothing but positive feedback on that. Um, we have after school programs um, at our Title I schools. Um, those are identified schools uh, where kids will have an opportunity to receive uh, NJS help uh, in that regard. Um, and then of course there's full day kindergarten, which I should go to the top of the list, but I wanted to start with the things that are common uh, across the district. Um, that is certainly uh, a, a, a massive uh, undertaking and something that is, I've again heard nothing but positive things from all the teachers, kindergarten teachers. I see the first grade teachers telling me about what they're observing um, going on and, and what they're looking forward to uh, next year. Uh, we have the brand new Journeys Language Arts Literacy Program which is Common Core Aligned. We have Math Expressions Program which is Common Core Aligned. We have the Level Literacy Intervention Program at our Title I schools this year that we're looking to implement uh, even further in, in future years which um, uh, is a targeted reading instruction uh, program uh, for uh, struggling readers. We are uh, starting to get DRA2 kits out across the district which is Diagnostic Reading Assessment which uh, allows teachers to uh, find out what reading level specifically their students are on so that they can target their instruction. We have, ah, we have teachers uh, utilizing the six plus one traits of uh, writing program uh, across the district. And we have academic coaches, two new academic coaches this year, so uh, actually, well, uh, three now, I guess, um, that uh, are putting on demo lessons and are assisting teachers in language arts literacy and mathematics instruction. So a lot of stuff going on at the elementary level. On to the middle school, grades six through eight. Again, they're taking the NJ ask. What the curriculum audit uh, revealed that there were some st uh, lack of standards alignment and some assessments not matching uh, student outcomes. But yet, in spite of that, again, ha better than half of the subgroups uh, at the middle school level district wide uh, met or exceeded their progress targets in both language arts literacy and mathematics. So, what are we doing to try um, and make that even better? Well, uh, okay. 
Again, right side of the chart's the same. All those professional staff initiatives um, are, are being done at the middle school level, as well as the common assessments, the tech infusion, on course performance plus, and there are after school uh, programs at uh, at the Title I school. Um, in addition to that, middle schools are utilizing Achieve 3000, um, which is a um, an online program which provides students with high interest nonfiction text that is at their reading level. Um, and I'm hearing positive feedback from middle schools about that. Um, they are working in their PLCs to uh, really target unpacking of the Common Core so that their teachers are prepared to address those standards in their classroom. And we also have secondary supervisors um, providing additional supports at the uh, middle school level um, and, and additional support for those teachers. The high school level, um, they take the uh, HESPA examination. The HESPA is given to all 11th grade students and it assesses mathematics and language arts literacy. Uh, when we did the curriculum audit uh, on the high school level, the big thing uh, that was noticed was the need for common assessments, and as I've alluded to, that's something that has since been addressed. Um, despite that, all of our subgroups, both high schools, every single one of them met or exceeded their progress targets in English language arts. And better than 85% of the students met or exceeded their progress targets in mathematics. So, good job high school. Um, and again, what are we doing at the high school? Same professional staff initiatives. Um, the tech infusion, we could say a little bit more about that because we're working towards, uh, we have the one-to-one uh, -one laptop initiative uh, going on at the high school level. Um, in addition to on course performance plus and the common assessments. In addition to that, they have Apex, which is a, a piece of software that every teacher has uh, available to them, which allows them to work uh, a blended learning model into their instruction to um, really help with those uh, students that maybe are absent for um, an extended period of time due to whatever circumstances. They now have the ability to um, assign the students' work at, while they're out and keep them um, on pace instead of kid coming back after a um, couple of weeks and, and potentially being behind now, they have the option to, to do coursework online. Uh, we have embedded cor uh, courses, uh, college courses uh, through uh, Ocean County College. We have additional AP course offerings this year. And we also have a, a brand new fourth year math class. Um, uh, and we have a brand new fourth year <laughs> math class. So a lot going on at the high school level as well. A lot going on K through 12. It's been... Um, it's been awesome. It's, it's a lot of stuff going on, and I've been uh, happy to be a part of it all. And that's all I have, so thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> Moving on to the approval of our minutes, uh, November 13th, 2013 special meeting, November 21st, 2013 regular meeting, and November 21st, 2013 executive session. Do I have a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Thank you. Excuse me, Ms. Cantillo? Yes. Um, I'd like to make a motion to amend the November 21st regular meeting notes, um, specifically page 13, um, on number one, it's human resources number one. I voted no just on Mr. Morgan, um, his resignation date. Um, that was the only one I voted for, and I'd like the minutes to reflect that change. Okay, do I have, you're making a motion, Mrs. Souter? Yes. Do I have a second? Second, Mrs. Yeah, Thank no. you. Uh, any objections from who made the original motion and second? Are you willing to? No. No objection. Okay. Yes, then do you vote? Okay, Mrs. Carey? Okay. This is the motion to amend. Motion to amend, yes. and then you have to take a vote on the, yes. on the motion for the first. Mr. Tolte? For the 21st. For the 21st. Yes. <coughs> Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Cusinelli? Yes. Mr. Panucci? Yes. Ms. Souter? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Ms. Cantillo? Yes. Thank you. No. Right, now I... I, I have a motion to approve all of them. We have right. that. Is there, are there any other questions or comments on the minutes from anyone else? Seeing none, Mrs. Carey? Mr. Tolte? Uh, I'd like to abstain on November 13th. Wasn't here. And yes, on the 23rd. Regular meeting and the executive session. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Cusinelli? Yes. Mr. Panucci? Yes. 
Ms. Souter? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Ms. Cantilla? Yes. Moving on to committee reports, communications and public engagement, Mrs. Cusinelli? Hi, thank you. Unfortunately, this month's committee meeting uh, was snowed out, but I would like to happily report that uh, our newsletter, new newsletter launched and is available on the website, so I'd like to direct everybody to please go um, look at that. And also, as um, grades are coming in for all of our alumni who are currently in college, I'd like to make a plea for everybody to please send us your good news. And when you're very excited that your son or daughter has made Dean's List this semester, which I'm sure many of them will, we would love it if you would please send that um, to our good news page, which is also on the website. Site. So, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Cusinelli. Curriculum and instruction, Mrs. Souter. Thank you. We held our meeting on December 16th. Present was Dr. Yuzinski, Mr. Conti, Mrs. Cusinelli, Mr. Filippone, Dr. Caldez, Mrs. Krausman, Ms. Lane, Mr. Jarman, and Dr. Morgan. Um, we got an update on the Stevens Institute of Technology grant integ integrating STEM approaches. Ms. Lane, the eighth grade science teacher at Lake Riviera, is one of six teachers in district who volunteered to take part in this grant. She was required to take two classes this past summer for a two week period. There is a monetary payment through the grant as well as a $400 to be used for classroom materials. Ms. Lane purchased a small classroom wind turbine, lab kits, teaching resources for probes, which is a research-based best practice and various materials to build their engineering devices. She says what she has learned has changed the way she teaches. The application of science is presented in a much more fulfilling aspect. Her students grasp more science integrating engineering with the curriculum and she turn keys all that she learns to the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade teachers as well. Ms. Lane and Ms. Krausman both say that the five elementary school teachers participating in the grant are all excited about what they're learning and they bring that back to their students. Anatomy and Physiology. In September, the committee discussed possibly continuing the Anatomy and Physiology class for an additional semester. Mrs. Krausman feels, as well as other science colleagues and teachers, that students will be better served to have a broad science background by taking one of the other science electives. So we'll just keep it as um, one block of Anatomy and Physiology. AP prerequisites. The only changes in prerequisites are to the English and History AP classes. All others are the same. The changes are in, will be included in the new program of studies. AP class schedule. Mr. Jarman, the supervisor of language arts, said discussions resulted in keeping the same AP schedule as this year. So all AB and full year classes will remain the same for next school year. And that's it. Thank you, Ms. Cantillo. Thank you, Mrs. Souter. Uh, facilities, Mr. Reed. Thank you. Uh, we met on December 9th, uh, just before the snow hit. Uh, present were myself, Ms. Souter, Mr. Panucci, Dr. Uzensky, Jim Edwards, Walter Campbell, John Hyphantis, uh, Bob Vogel, Jerry Rubina, who is our architect, and Lawrence Sprague, who is a representative of Sustainable Energy Funding Program. Uh, the first item we discussed was our Rod Grant approvals, uh, as we mentioned last meeting, which were uh, 17 projects for this year and eight projects for next year, meaning during the summer they'll be completed. Uh, the state will be funding 40% of those uh, costs and the local share is 60% for our district. So uh, we, we discussed the problems we may have getting the plans reviewed. As you are all aware, the building department is under the gun with a lot of uh, applications for a home, et cetera, types of improvements. So uh, they've been inundated trying to get uh, permits out and inspections, et cetera. So uh, we're looking into possible alternatives to having those plans reviewed and uh, approved but it's definitely something we're taking into consideration. Uh, power purchase agreement for solar was discussed. Uh, our architect informed the committee that they are currently compiling the roof and structural drawings for the buildings. His firm plans on having the roof conditions assessment completed by the end of January with a request for proposals ready for review in February. I asked Mr. Rubino for clarification in regards to the fee that was approved to be certain that said fee will be reimbursed to the board 
upon award to a PPA contractor, power purchase agreement contractor. So the fee for the roof assessments will be covered by whoever does the project if we go ahead and approve somebody to do the project. It will not be a cost to the board. Um, we, Mr. Campbell asked uh, that the, to clarify that the structures would be reviewed to determine if they could support the weight of the panels and our architect confirmed that his uh, firm would be doing this as part of their proposal. <clears throat> the energy uh, self-improvement plan. Uh, I let the committee know that the Board of Public Utilities was going to come in and they did uh, on Tuesday night at our special board meeting. And we had scheduled the architect to come in tonight, but in lieu of the fact that uh, we were going to hear from the uh, Board of Public Utilities on the uh, different types of programs we could use to try and uh, improve our facilities and pay for it with energy savings, either directly through a, what they call an ESCO company or in-house do-it-yourself. Uh, we just talked to the uh, BPU on Tuesday night. Uh, for those of you that didn't attend, you can see uh, our conversations on the uh, station, whatever it is, in your BTV. BTV. BTV, whatever station in your uh, cable area. Um, we, we already have done a number of lighting projects. We, we, if you recall, we did an energy audit back in 2011, identified all the uh, areas in the district that we could save money by uh, replacing such things as lights. Uh, those were the low-hanging fruit, as we call it. You, by replacing lights, you can save money right away, and there's about a five-year payback, whereas you have to go out and install new boilers. There's, you know, a 25-year payback on that because it's not as uh, cost-effective. So we've already done uh, a lighting projects in-house or with contractors from that energy order that total about $280,000. So that work is ongoing. You know, we have in-house staff replacing uh, light fixtures uh, with more efficient light fixtures throughout the district. And uh, we really don't need a lot of supervision for that. Once, you, once the uh, electrician knows how to replace the fixture uh, and you have a thousand fixtures to do, you just keep moving. So that will be ongoing and we'll try and get some of these other projects done with an ESCO project. Our long-range facility plan um, has the architect informed the committee that the Department of Education has not released any additional guidance on that. I will point out that our long-term facilities assessment this year is being done by uh, Mr. Edwards, uh, not Mr. Edwards, Mr. Vogel, our facilities manager. He's informed me that they've completed about 10 of the 13 buildings. In the past, we've had the architect do that and, and it we had to pay him for it, so we're, we're getting that done in-house and should have it by next meeting. Okay. Uh, there's a lot on this agenda for the facilities, as you may know. Uh, we're doing a lot of projects here in the school. Uh, sustainable Energy Funding Program. Uh, Mr. Campbell's taken the lead on this, uh, provided the committee with a list of the projects at the Brick Township High School right here that uh, he would like to see done. Uh, Mr. Sprague from the uh, the uh, committee, uh, the company that he represents, which is Sustainable Energy Funding Program, um, discussed the ability to utilize his service to lease the improvements over a five-year period. So we would make the improvements to the um, to the building and pay for it over a five-year period, like you would on a car lease. So that's one way to get a lot of things done quickly and pay for it over time. Of course, there is the finance expense of it, but current lending rates on equipment leases are in the 2, two to 3 percent range, so this is a good time to do it now if we are going to proceed with it. Um, we discussed also the possibility of using the uh, equipment leases for the Rod Grant project, uh, which would free up some more money uh, for longer term projects by pay, paying over five years instead of two years. Uh, Mr. Edwards, he, will, he did check that out and we can use uh, this lease, capital lease program for the Rod Grant, so the committee is exploring all the possibilities on that. 
on-site generation of power. Mr. Hyphanis discussed with the committee the possibility of utilizing fuel cells for power generation. He indicated that money is available due to Superstorm Sandy and incentives for combined heat and power are available through the BPU, Board of Public Utilities. He indicated that a 400 kilowatt system would cost approximately 300,000. Uh, we requested that Mr. Hyphanis do further research and report back to the committee on the viability of that project. Uh, we still have not uh, heard from the Department on, of Education on the Laurelton School. Um, we're waiting here if they're going to allow us to lease that, that building out. Brick Memorial High School parking lot lights. Uh, the committee uh, was informed by Mr. Vogel that the student lot is complete and that there are 10 more poles to complete for the project to be finished. Again, that's a low energy. Uh, uh, High efficiency lights putting, being put in there to save energy. The Brick Township High School Science uh, Room renovations. This was a project that had a budget of uh, about two and a half million dollars, uh, which we initiated in uh, 2011 12. Uh, it's taken a while to complete, but uh, it has been uh, completed and a lot of educational value to those new science classrooms. And there was uh, a credit change order for any unused allowance, and uh, I understand we're going to try and approve that tonight, how we're going to dispose of that. It's always nice to have a leftover allowance. Transportation uh, building, we're doing air quality improvement project there that's costing 225000 and we reviewed the architect's report on the progress there, as we did on the uh, Betts Memorial Middle School, there's emergency light it, lighting and exit signs uh, are being done there along with the Brick Memorial High School emergency lighting. That project budget is $303,000. Uh, we reviewed the architect's uh, uh, report there. At Betts Memorial uh, Elementary School, uh, we've got a uh, project budget uh, in total. There's four high uh, HVAC server room uh, projects going on. Vets Memorial Elementary School, Brick Township High School, Brick Memorial High School, and that combined budget is about $475,000, and uh, we reviewed the architect's report on that, on as far as the progress. Brick Township High School windows. This project is ongoing. You can see they're working at night out there now on these as I came in. This is a $991,000 uh, budgeted item for this project. Uh, it's ongoing. It's behind schedule, as you can well see. Uh, and there is a change order that has to be uh, approved by the board tonight. Brick Township High School exterior doors and hardware project. Uh, that was a $540,000 budget. Uh, that's been largely completed. and and we reviewed the architect's report on that. So I, I include the numbers for these projects so that you see we are spending a lot of money on projects. This isn't something that we've, you know, I use the phrase, kick the can down the road. It has to be addressed. You can't fix everything at once. And we're, we're trying to spend, uh, you know, two and a half million dollars a year on these capital projects. And I think we've been on target on that. A uh, big item is the uh, building controls evaluation. This is a project uh, budget of $92,000. Uh, Mr. Hyphanis reported to the committee that the schedule the contractor has planned for the commissioning project. So what that will do is uh, we, we're going to have to go around and find out which controls are working for heating and air conditioning in all the buildings. Uh, which aren't working so we can figure out which ones we have to fix in order to, to get the temperature right in each room, which is very difficult. You know, you've been in rooms, those of you who are in the schools, it's 85 degrees in one room and 55 degrees in another room. So whatever we can do with the controls to fix that is uh, going to help the classroom situation. The uh, Brick Township High School electrical systems and transformers. 
We spent quite a bit of time on this. It's a project budget of $425,000. We reviewed the report submitted by the architect. Uh, and we also had a report from Mr. Hyphanis who expressed some major concerns uh, to the committee in regards to the project design. Uh, we requested that Mr. Hyphanis provide these uh, comments in writing. He did. He presented them on our Tuesday special meeting, which was all related to facilities. Uh, they will be sent to Concord for review. Concord Engineering is the people that came up with the, uh, the, the layout on how we're going to fix the transformers and the electrical system here at Brick Township High School. And they're going to come to our next facilities uh, committee meeting in January and go over uh, you know, the criticisms that we have of their proposal. Osborneville Multipurpose uh, HVAC is a project budget of 256000 uh, We reviewed the uh, committee report, uh, the architect's report, um, and we hope to uh, have project bids uh, opened in January. We have a big commitment to get that one done out there by next spring when it gets really hot, and we're, we have every intention of getting it done. So we're committed to that. Just like you know, winning a uh, having a winning state championship football team. If you don't make the commitment, you're not going to get it done. So we're making the commitment. The Brick Memorial High School Auditorium Doors Project uh, that was a twenty-eight thousand dollar project budget uh, that is complete. Storage trailers at Vets Memorial Middle School Athletic Fields. Mr. Vogel informed the committee that he is still waiting for the township to have the equipment available to assist with the move. Um, mold issues. Mr. Edwards informed the committee that the forensic engineer has begun to compile information on the uh, EEC building, uh, which is a, connected to the administration building up there uh, in the Vets Memorial Complex. Mr. Vogel indicated that he would provide a status report to Dr. Uzinski and Mr. Edwards to have the project advanced. Uh, Dr. Uzinski informed the committee that room 31 at Drum Point was requested to be tested again, which it was, and the test results came back good, meaning there was no uh, high level of mold in the room. And I requested that a policy de be developed uh, with regard to mold testing so that district resources are not uh, squandered on doing uh, multiple tests to no, with no a need for it. It's very expensive. It's going to run about $1,500 to do a test of an individual classroom to find out this, the, the status of the mold in the, in the room. Um, that would be it. Our next meeting is January 13th. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Well, can you give our finance report? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, we didn't get any water tonight. I just said they should get <laughs> um, anyway, I, I, I take a long time on the facilities because uh, there are a lot of projects going on and I want the uh, uh, community to be aware that this is, you know, something that the, this board has made a priority, uh, both budgetarily and, uh, you know, in terms of staffing to get these things done. Finance Committee met on uh, December 11th. Myself, Ms. Cantillo, Mr. Talty, Dr. Uzensky, and Mr. Edwards were there. Uh, the auditors were supposed to be there. They weren't uh, there due to a prior commitment. We had originally scheduled the meeting uh, the day before, but uh, that was snowed out. Uh, the auditors have not completed the audit due to the recently received consolidated monitoring report from the New Jersey Department of Education. Excuse me. Mr. Edwards and Dr. Yuzinski indicated that they have requested additional support for findings mentioned in the report but not received from New Jersey Department of Education. Uh, we have not received all of what was requested. The re 
that report will be discussed in public at the January board meeting with approval of a corrective action plan and or an appeal at the February board meeting. Mr. Edwards indicated that he has notified the county school business administrator that the audit will not be submitted until the report from New Jersey Department of Education is finalized. 2013-14 budget. The committee discussed the transfers that were sent and uh, we withdrew one of the transfers uh, for the rental of a bus since the rental was caused by the new bus not being delivered on time. So uh, the people that were supposed to get us the new bus wanted to charge us a rental for a bus that they didn't deliver and we decided that was not right. It was their fault they didn't deliver the bus. Um, We reviewed the projections for medical, prescription, and dental. Uh, Mr. Talty requested that Mr. Edwards provide an analysis of what the uh, total contributions for the TWU were under Chapter 78 uh, so that they can be utilized in upcoming negotiations. We'd like to know what you know the contributions will be, as you may or may not know. Chapter 78 is a new law that went into effect and it phases in the uh, employees in the districts, their contribution to their health care over a four year period and it's, ba and it's uh, scaled based on uh, your, your salary so that higher paid employees are going to contribute more of their, a higher percentage of their uh, health care premium than lower paid employees. We reviewed the analysis of the electric, natural gas, uh, diesel, and gasoline. Um, and we, we have an issue there with billing with the town. Uh, it's called an administrative fee. And uh, Dr. Edwards and uh, uh, Mr. Edwards and Dr. Yuzinski. Sorry, You're Jim. My doctor. I didn't see your certificate. <laughs> Uh, are going to sit down with the town and try and uh, iron out our, our differences on, on what's being charged for what. 2014-15 budget, we discussed the expenditure report provided by uh, Mr. Edwards showing the amount projected not to be spent for 2013-14 budget, which could be available for use in 2014-15. Uh, as you know, we have 800 lines of account for the budget and uh, I did go over that uh, with an eye towards what we're spending for uh, salary and benefits and as was the case I think in 2011, it's still 83% of the budget. So if you wonder where most of the money goes, uh, it's salary and, and benefits. Cafeteria report, some good news there. The, ca the committee reviewed the report provided by uh, uh, Mr. Blasey. Uh, the pro November shows a profit of three thousand six hundred and five dollars, which begins the year to date brings the year to date loss down to fifty one thousand. But this is compared to last year, where we were at a, a November loss of one hundred and fifty seven thousand dollars year to date. So, in terms of a football game, we're, we've we've got we've got a good lead going into the second half of the season. Workers' compensation. Uh, I reviewed with the committee that uh, one of our community volunteers, Mr. Kirby, and I held a meeting with uh, Dr. Crawford to discuss options for reducing the board's workers' compensation claims. Uh, Dr. Crawford has volunteered to perform a claims review with the, for the district, uh, and we're, so we're going to meet with our school board's insurance group and our uh, qual care to set up a meeting, hopefully in January, mid-January. Uh, I gave a list to uh, Mr. McFadden tonight, our human resources person, of about uh, 85 claims that we would like to review in that January meeting. You know, this is a, a real big expense for the district, and we've got to work on getting it down. Um, just trying to skip some of these uh, items that are not that important. Revised tax levy schedule, Mr. Edwards informed the committee that he has received a request from the township to modify the tax levy schedule. 
Uh, Mr. Edward Edwards indicated that this type of request is received every year and does not cause our district any cash flow issues. So it will be on the agenda tonight. We uh, approved the uh, contract uh, for the Brick Memorial High School class of 2014 senior ball to be held at Southgate Manor in Freehold. Uh, we reviewed it. It's going to be on the agenda tonight. We reviewed the uh, board meeting calendar for this coming year. Bus advertising. Mr. Edwards provided the committee with information that I requested in regards to the Jackson Board of, Ed uh, board of Education's recently announced school bus advertising contract. Um, I'm going to look into other sources of revenue for our brick school bus advertising. Uh, school funding formula. Dr. Yuzinski and Mr. Edwards provided the, the committee with a recommended resolution provided by New Jersey uh, ASBO, Association of School Board uh, Officers. School business officials. School business. You were close. Officers. Mm -hmm. uh, so that will be on tonight's agenda. Thank you. Just Thank to, you, Mr. Reed. We pulled that agenda, that resolution from the agenda. That, that was, was pulled. That was one we discussed yesterday. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Mr. Tolte, Human Resources. Thank you, Mrs. Quintella. Can can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the Human Resource Committee met on December 11th. Uh, present with Dr. Uzinski. Uh, uh, Mr. McFadden and Dr. Morgan, uh, Sharon Cantilla, Karen Cusinelli, and myself. Uh, Mr. Puglisi, the, the, the teacher's president, uh, was there for a short period of time uh, to discuss a personal issue. He left, and then we discussed uh, a, a, a wide variety of subjects. Uh, if I went into all of them, uh, you, you'd, I, I think I'd put you to sleep. Uh, nevertheless, the, the, some of the things we talked about were, were, were re, re, resignations, retirements, vacancies, um, all the things if you go on uh, the, the human resource at the end of uh, the, on the agenda, those are the things that, the vast majority of those things we discussed and we, uh, Dr. Uh, Yuzinski uh, recommended those, and I'm recommending as the chairman that we vote in favor of those. Uh, our next meeting is uh, January 8th at 10 a.m. And uh, it's somebody else's turn now. Thank you, Mr. Talty. Uh, Mr. Panucci, New Jersey School Board Delegate. Yes, not too much has been going on with Thanksgiving and Christmas, but the next county meetup for the County School Board <laughs> Association is going to be Thursday, January 9th, 6 o'clock in Lakewood. So any board members, you're all invited. And I've been a broken record all year about moving the budget deadlines uh, for November districts with November elections. Nothing's happened. It's basically stalled. Um, S-287 in the State Senate and A-43000 in the Assembly finally passed their respective education committees. It's finally going to go to the floor for a vote. That's going to move our budget deadlines up uh, back to May 20... Uh, May? I wrote it down. May 14th. So that's going to help us have more accurate budgets um, when we go through that process. And that's it, Ms. Cantillo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Panucci. Mr. Conti, Garden State Thank Coalition. Uh, much like Mr. Yeah. Panucci, there's not a lot going on right now at the uh, state legislature level. Uh, our next meeting for Garden State Coalition is um, January 29th, which is a Wednesday at 3.30 in New Brunswick uh, that I'll be attending. And uh, there will be a report thereafter. Thank you, Ms. Cantel. Thank you, Mr. Conti. Dr. Yuzinski, do you have a superintendent's report? Uh, not a, I just want to thank the Board of Education for allowing us to recognize all our champions in our district. Um, the gymnastics 
team was not able to be here this evening because they are practicing, because they have events going on. Um, and the coach was uh, honored with uh, Coach of the Year Award. So we're going to award those people and those students we're going to recognize in, Janu in January's meeting. I'd also like to thank Mr. Barisi for his presentation. As you can see, our district is moving forward very nicely to gain student achievement. Again, I want to recognize all our administrators, teachers, and again, the Board of Education for all your support in helping us to move this district forward as we, as we are approaching the 21st century with all this new uh, Achieve New Jersey and the mandates from the state, uh, and we are ahead of the game. I did have an opportunity to be with the county at the county office uh, with the review for the mid for the pre preparation of this new budget year, and uh, we are one of the top schools in Ocean County in the area of technology, and we are doing leaps and bounds with what what we have, and they're very impressed with the fact that the Board of Education is keeping taxes down and with all the amount of things that we're doing. So kudos to the Board of Education. I thank you, and I'm proud and honored to be a resident of Brick Township. Thank you, Dr. Yuzinski. Curriculum and instruction, Dr. Morgan. Thank you, Madam President. The superintendent recommends that the board approve the following items, numbers one through four. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have a motion and a second for items one through four? I'll make a motion. Second. Thank you. Do I have any comments or questions from the board on, on items one through four? Seeing none, do I have any questions from the public on items one through four? Seeing none, Mrs. Kerry? Mr. Talty? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Cusinelli? Yes. Mr. Panucci? Yes. Ms. Suter? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Ms. Cantillo? Yes. Operations, Mr. Edwards? Yes, thank you, Ms. Cantillo. The, tonight, the superintendent recommends that the board approve items 1 through 26, and then item 28 and 29. Item 27 was deleted. Do I have a motion and a second for items 1 through 26 and then items 28 and 29? So moved. Thank you, Mr. I'll Reed. second. Mrs. Souter? Thank you. Any questions from the board on those items? Seeing none, questions from the public on those items? Mr. Finelli? Operations. Vic Finale, 24 Meadow Point Drive. I know Mr. Reed mentioned the tax levy schedule change. Can somebody just quickly tell me what that's about? Mr. Edwards? Sure. Uh, the township has requested us to defer $2 million of the payment that we would have received in this month until January. So that, that's coming from the township? Yes, correct. And you said yes to that? Well, we're, we've sort of said yes since it already happened but we're asking the board to ratify that if the board were to say no then we would have to tell them that we're not going to let that happen but we've always honored that request in the past is that normal procedure it's been on the agenda no, i mean year. normal that the township doesn't pay on time uh, i would tell you that since i've been the business administrator they've requested this every single year every year yes i'm, I'm and i'm asking to look at maria roberts because she's been on staff longer than i have Okay. Since you've been here? Yeah, it's pretty common. I don't okay. know if it's pretty common throughout the state of New Jersey, but it's definitely common to brick. Uh, on uh, item number 18, the, the school facility projects, what period of time are we looking at to get that list completed? Is there a period of time? I'm asking... Mr. Who am I supposed to ask? Okay. No, I, I understand, Mr. Finelli, Mr. Edwards. Yeah, the the, uh, the plan that was adopted by the board is to have that work done over the summer of 2014 and summer of 2015. Right, that, is, was, is, uh, that was back in August that plan was adopted. This Is all of this to be done or is some of it done already? No, it's all to be done. It's all to be done? Yeah. 
by the, by the summer uh, of summer of 2014 and summer of 2015. Oh, so for the next two years. Correct. Okay. I'm just curious as to why there's no summaries on the dollar amounts. Is there a reason why we don't put summaries on this? It's just the, the way the projects need to be submitted back to the state for acceptance. I say again. The way it needs to be submitted. It's the format that it not needs to be submitted back to the state of New Jersey for acceptance. It's their format. Okay. So if I, uh, I've, I've heard a lot of numbers bounced around as to how much we're spending on improvements. If, uh, if I look at this, over the next two years, we're, we're looking to spend about $9.4 million, $5.6 million coming out of our pocket and the rest coming out of the state. Uh, I do have a schedule because I did do one that adds it up, so if you bear with me Could one Could you speak second. into the microphone a, a little better? Yeah. Sorry. Can you hear me now, Mr. Finale? Better? Much. <laughs> I don't know that I can get. Is that better? Yeah, yeah that's better. Okay, thank. Sorry about that. Um, I have a schedule that I can do the math for you. It makes sure your numbers are right. Uh, yes, the total project amount on those projects is nine million four hundred nine thousand five hundred eighty-six dollars, of which our local share would be five million six hundred forty-five thousand seven hundred fifty-two dollars. Okay. In uh, all of the discussions that went on about all the improvements for the for the uh, the last couple of years, the majority of this seems to be going to window replacements, uh, door replacements, and fire alarms. One heating and air conditioning rooftop, one roof replacement, and one boiler. I heard all sorts of complaints about the boiler systems in many of the schools. Is this really the priority list? This is what really needs to be done? Or is this only the projects that somebody will pay 40% for? No, this is the projects that the facilities committee selected as the priorities of, of a lot of different projects that were presented to the facilities committee and then the board approved in August to advance. Yeah, but add to that the fact that uh, what, what's the phrase the state uses for which you should submit class one? Class one projects. Class one tier projects. One, sorry, tier one projects. Tier one. Tier one projects are um, health and safety. Health and safety. Health and safety, so that's really what we're going to with the doors and windows, fire alarms and everything health yeah, and the, safety. The, 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 to Mr. Reed's point, when the state had told us when this round of allocation became available, sorry, can you hear me again? I guess I feel like, when the, when the state had indicated that when this round of allocation came available, that they felt there wasn't going to be enough money to fund all of the projects that were going to be submitted to them. And so they were going to re really look at tier one projects first before they allowed funding to fall into tier two. Um, and so we had to really, you know, find, uh, go through our projects with a fine tooth comb to determine which ones we felt were the most needy for health and safety that we felt would be funded um, because we didn't want to have anything be kicked out, you know, that they weren't going to fund. And as it turns out, the state doesn't have enough money to fund all the projects. There, there are some unfunded projects. Actually, one of our projects, the Osborneville uh, boiler right now, we haven't gotten any indication that that project's being funded. So we're going we're moving ahead and doing the Osborneville boiler. It was actually included in the 1314 school budget as a capital project, but the state we submitted a grant application for that and haven't gotten anything back that it's going to be funded. Okay, thank you. One one mm -hmm. last question and now I probably know the answer to this. What can you tell us about item number 28? It's a, a, a settlement of an ongoing uh, litigation case. Okay. It, it, how old is it? it, it I'm not sure I wouldn't. Uh, okay. The reason I ask is because I know there was a lot of old stuff that was getting cleared up, and I'm just curious. I mean, if you read this, it sounds like the school board got sued and is paying somebody $15,000. No. That, that's all I could get out of it. Is that all we're allowed to get out of it? Because of the nature of the of the case, yes. You can't tell whether the school board was being sued, or that's just the formality that the school board pays it, or the the uh, no, it, w it was ongoing litigation uh, between a uh, plaintiff and the school board that finally got resolved and got settled, and this is the amount of the settlement, okay. which, quite frankly, is from my perspective, is a good settlement for the district. From my perspective, the school board did something that they shouldn't have. 
I'm not going to. You can have your own, you know, <laughs> your own opinion, Mr. Finelli. Sometimes when you look at it, it's it's an issue of how much is at stake, uh, what you can negotiate, how long, how much will cost you, and when do you make the decision that's in the best interest of your taxpayers, of your your students, and of the board. And I I did recommend this because I felt it was a, a settlement that was in the best interest of the district and it'll it'll end a case that's been ongoing I don't know how long but it has been ongoing for a while okay thank you <laughs> are there any other questions seeing none mrs. Carey mr. Tolte yes mr. Conti um, yes on items 1 through 18 1 through 18 abstain on 19 numbers 20 through 25 yes no on 26 yes on items number 28 to 29 Ms. Cusinelli? yes mr. Pinucci uh, yes to all I have to abstain on number 19 and I'm gonna vote no on number 26 Ms. Suter? no on number 26 and yes on everything else Yes. Ms. Cantillo. Yes. Moving on to human resources, Mr. McFadden. The superintendent recommends that the board approve items 1 through 22. Excuse me, Mr. Tolte, you voted. I didn't hear. You voted in the last... I voted. I said yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Yes. I said yes. Great. I'm sorry, Mr. McFadden. Could you repeat that? The superintendent recommends that the board approve the following items 1 through 22. Thank you. Do I have a motion for items 1 through 22? So be it. Second. Thank you. Are there any questions from board members on items 1 through 22? Yes, Mrs. Souter. Um, on number 20, um, when did that contract change? Because the last two unaffiliated contracts that we approved, um, there was only single health coverage and there was no reimbursement for in-district expenses. And this contract doesn't say that. And I'm just, is that just this contract or are we back to the old way? I'm just a little confused. No. Um, actually, Tom Liming, and you, you, you're talking specifically about family coverage? Can you use me? No, sorry. I'm just uh, the unaffiliated contracts, from what I understand, we were trying to change and make them only single coverage. And if you wanted family coverage, you had to pay the difference between single and family. This contract does not state that. I'm sorry, but in the, we, the last couple of contracts, we have approved family coverage for people. Um, not in the last two unaffiliated. We have not. Uh, we have. Um, we have not. Okay. Because um, I, I looked back at the last two, and they're different from this contract. This was what was negotiated um, and what was approved by the superintendent, and this is what w went on. But the last, I'm looking at. Um, when I look at the benefits package that we we have out there and the people that have received contracts do have family coverage okay well, I'm stating and I don't know if the rest of the board knows this but the last two unaffiliated contracts do not state that and they also do not state um, well one of the last two does not state that they get reimbursed for in-district expenses was that another was that something else that was negotiated if I may different? if I may interrupt yeah. For a minute to the chair, please. When we were talking about the uh, unaffiliated and when we discussed regarding having benefits, we said that anyone that comes in new to the district will have only single coverage until such time they achieve tenure. These unaffiliated positions are not tenured. They would never achieve tenure. We have had a couple people that recently did come in that were offered the family, but they have to pay the percentage towards it as per the state. We never said anything regarding that other than that when they achieve tenure, 
then at that time they would be offered the family but they have to pay the percentage to it as per the state whatever percentage it is based on what salary you're receiving so I do happen to know we have a maintenance person that did that did receive that and that was what I had looked at prior to making this recommendation to HR and I even spoke to the person and he said yes and it is in the contract so that's how we based that and made that recommendation then to the HR committee okay so I apologize for the confusion on that but that's how that was done well I will tell you I disagree with you because okay. like I said I know there were two I'm not gonna and I know of, I know of one so you know you got two I've got one I made the recommendation to the HR okay and that's what's in the that's what's in the unaffiliated contracts who on the unaffiliated list can obtain tenure I know mr. No Edwards well, Mr. Edwards has tenure. He has tenure, right? right. That's you can't. So do nobody else on there has can no. get tenure. Unaffiliated is not getting tenure. Okay. Um, well, then I don't yeah. agree. Okay. Assistant business administrator as well is a tenured position. Okay. Thank you. Which she already has as well. Yeah, okay. that's that's okay. grandfathered for those that have it. Okay. Going forward, they do not. All right. Well, I have a difference of opinion on the last two contracts. Um, on number nineteen and number ten, can I ask why we need a payroll clerk and a senior payroll clerk? Jim Edwards. Mr. Edwards, can you answer that? Um, sorry, what number was that, Ms. Suter? I was, I well, number 19 has a senior payroll clerk, and number 10 has a payroll clerk. Uh, all right, well, let me, I'll, I guess I'll answer 10 first, if I could. Well, I just want to know why right, are there so, two? So, well, we have two payroll clerks in the office. There's, uh, we have a payroll, actually, we have three people in that, that sub-department of the business office. There's the payroll supervisor, uh, then she has a, a senior payroll clerk, and she's got a payroll clerk. The payroll clerk position uh, was vacated. That person took a guidance secretarial or guidance clerk position at Brick Memorial High School. So it's, it's an open position that we're trying to fill. And the senior clerk position that you see there, the senior payroll clerk position rather, uh, she's moving from senior payroll clerk, she's actually moving over to human resources. She's transferring over. So we're, we are going to have an opening there as well. Okay. so. The one on number 19, she's already an employee here. She's a senior payroll clerk right now, and she's okay. moving to Human Resources, so we're going to have an opening there. Okay. Yeah, he has, just uh, read Ted it. has an opening okay. in Human Resources currently. Okay. All right. I just read it wrong. Thank you. Any okay. other questions? Yeah, just. Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Panucci? Uh, just so I heard that right, number 19, the payroll clerk, that's not a brand new position, or did I misunderstand that? It's not a brand new position. Uh, We're just senior payroll clerk is currently, the, the person that you see on that there is currently occupying that position. She's transferring to the human resources position that is open at this time. That's okay. I just wanted to make sure I understood that yep. it's not a brand new position. We're, we're filling it in. That's correct. Thank you. Mr. Reed, did you have a question? Yeah, number 10, uh, the mechanics helper, is that a new position? Number 10. Mr. McFadden? No. Uh, Yes, that is a, a new position, the mechanics helper. The bus garage has been asking for help for a long time, and um, we we are that we are filling, giving them another mechanics helper. And what's the annual salary, not the prorated? That um, that is the annual salary. That is the that, annual that salary. That will be prorated. Okay, that's the salary yeah, to be prorated is twenty three thousand two thirteen. Salary to be prorated. You know, it should be uh, it should be known that the mechanics um, that do a servicing of our buses are probably the lowest paid uh, mechanics in the county. Uh, we we uh, when we compare ourselves to Tom Zever or ja Jackson, there's a difference in the top mechanics of some in, in some cases of twenty to thirty thousand dollars. So it's very, very difficult to get, to get somebody to come in uh, for these positions. So uh, as we negotiate going forward, uh, it's the board's intention, just so that you know, that we want to raise the salaries of these people uh, so that we can get good mechanics, that we're not getting the mechanics from other districts that were rejected. So I think you should know that. Any That's all I have to what, say. What are the health benefits related to that? Is it as per the union contract? Yeah. The same thing as the T, it's they're part of the TWU. So whatever 
whatever benefits are offered, uh, they have. Uh, they now have choices. They can take, uh, I think, a, a ten dollar copay or a fifteen dollar copay, which will result in a uh, less expensive program, which would mean they would pay less for a fifteen dollar copay than a ten dollar copay. So they're basically choices amongst the state benefits plans, yes. state health benefits yep. plan. Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions by the board? Seeing none, do I have any questions from the public? Mr. Finelli. This is the guy we gotta work on. Number fourteen. Did I read that correctly? That the mentee pays for the mentor? Yes. Is that sorry, Madam President? Is that in all our mentor programs? It's the first time I've seen that up there. I'm, either I missed it or it wasn't up there before. No, excuse yeah. me, Madam President. May I? It, in the past, it was the board paid, and we've the board since we've changed that, and now the mentee pays the mentor. Oh, so it is something new. Yes. Okay. Thank and you. Better faith in my reading. And thank you. You are. Good idea. Uh, number 18. Uh, just a question. Uh, two promotions to assistant principal. What, what are the stipends for? Mr. McFadden, do you want to... Yeah. Yes, as part of the contract, the the stipends are the um, for assistant principal they get one thousand sixty two as assistant principal stipend, and the other stipend is three thousand dollars for assistant principal at the high school. It's part of the contract. Part of the contract. The yes, standard sir. answer. I love to have the person who negotiates those contracts. I mean, not that I'm nickel and diamond, but we're paying somebody. Hundred that hundred one thousand dollars, and then we're giving them a stipend because they're a principal in a middle school or assistant principal, and you're assistant principal in a high school. Why, why would you need a stipend if you're assistant principal in high school? Why, why do you need anybody? Anybody tell me why that's in there? I mean, you have five or six assistant principals in each high school, so it's not like you got a bigger workload because no. there's more students. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pinelli, we don't have five or six assistant principals in each high school. How many do we have? Well, in, in our high schools, we have three. three? And I think four. we have three at... Four. It's four, four in Brooklyn Memorial. Stand corrected, okay. four. Okay, and then it, at each um, elementary school, we may, we may have one. Some or, cases I, I you have none. That. Not all. None. Yeah, and some we does, have none. Does, yep. does the elementary assistant principal get a stipend also? I'm not familiar with the contract. Yeah, I think on that, they all get so it. I don't want to answer, Mr. Yeah, McFadden. Do you know? They all, they, they all get. get they all get it. They all get it. It's lower based on the on the schools. But it's in the contract. Nobody can tell me why. It was put in a contract a long, long time ago. About time we start getting some of that stuff that was put in there a long time ago taken out. Easier said than done. Yeah. Okay, uh, number 20, I had, some, I had some questions on that also. Uh, what, what is the 5% merit for? Which one is that? Are you uh, You want to get Jim? Oh, Jim? Mr. I'm Edwards, sorry. do you want to explain it? I missed the question. I was preoccupied researching something here. <laughs> okay, I'll repeat it. Not a problem. <laughs> What was the question, Mr. Number 20, it also says in the, in, in the contract that there's a 5% merit to be determined, discussed, or whatever. What, what is the 5% merit for? Uh, it hasn't been determined yet, but what's, what's being negotiated in the contract is that the board and the individual, once the individual is on, on board, will come up with goals to be met, and they'll be board approved. It's similar to the merit pay that we currently give the superintendent of schools. Which I used to be in favor of. <laughs> the, board will, the board will approve those goals, and then if the merit goals are met at, at a later date, the board will approve payment of those. Of how, many, uh, how many positions in the school have merit add-ons like this besides the superintendent? As far as I know, Dr. Zinsky, this will be the second, correct? Yours and this will be the second. So this, is, this is only the second, so this is something new. Is there another one, John? Yeah, yours. 
No, I don't have merit. So I don't now, have if my memory serves me, and I'm starting to think my memory's pretty good. Yeah. He may have it. I remember, I remember uh, a year or two ago when we were having uh, our continued problems with making a profit in the food service business. We came up with a 5% bonus that if uh, a person achieved a, bottom, a positive bottom line, we were going to give them 5%. Is that where that originated from? Yes. Yes. Yeah, Madam President? Yes, Mr. Finelli, that's correct. And also, just to answer Jim's question, uh, it is in regulations the business administrator may also have merit pay in his salary, which each year when we negotiate contracts, the Board of Education will be more than likely entertaining the possibility. Okay. I guess my question is, what do we pay people big salaries for if we can't? We've got to incent them on merit pay to, to do something more. Uh, when I worked in the industry, if you wanted somebody to do something, that was their negotiated, that's what their job description was. This is what you need to do. And if you do it well, we give you a job. If you just do it normally, you're not going to get a pay raise because we're already paying you to do that. Yet now we're starting to spend more money. Mr. Reed talked about 83% going to uh, pay and benefits, and now it looks like we're going to slowly but surely increase that number. Not the way I think we should go. I think people's job descriptions should say what you want them to do. Uh, let, let me give you, for instance, if you, if you have somebody and say, well, if you turn a profit, I'm going to give you 5%. So the, in the food service industry, we turn a $2,000 uh, $2, profit, so you're going to pay that person $4,500 for that. That math doesn't add up in my head. Mr. Finley, you, you know, excuse me. Uh, Mr. Finley, I just want to make it clear that in this district, uh, with our cafeteria last year, mm -hmm. uh, the person who, was, who has since uh, left, uh, she got $1,000, not as a raise, but as a, a bonus, basically, for bringing, in, bringing the cafeteria into a profit, yeah. a status. If, she did, if we didn't get that, she would not have gotten that 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 thousand dollars. It's not five percent. It was probably about a little over one percent. Well, I I, I I won't argue whether it was one percent or five. I thought it. No, was it's not five percent. Five percent. That's, that's, why, that's why I asked the 5, question, 000. and I got a nod when I asked, "Is that where that five percent came from?" Well, and I'll, I got nod saying yes. I mean, uh, being involved with that negotiations of that person, mm -hmm. I can tell you that. Uh, her salary was not, she did not get a 5% bonus. Okay. She got $1,000. And $1,000 divided by 90,000 is, you do the math, okay. it's a little over 1%. I reiterate my objection. We were starting to see a trend where we're giving out bonuses. And uh, I was originally for it. If you remember the first meeting we had back in the library when I said a bonus was a good thing? And then uh, later, after that, you heard me say tonight, I'm no longer in favor of a bonus, and uh, I'll tell you why very briefly, all right? We, we are now at a point where the, uh, if I understood correctly, the superintendent of uh, the county superintendent is now determining what the bonus for our, our superintendent is. Uh, that's what we're going with. What somebody else decided, I wish the, super, the county superintendent would be paying that bonus since we're going with his suggestions as to what we should be doing rather than the school board suggestions. Of I, th I think the school board does have uh, quite a bit of influence and impact on, on what he does and what uh, what we determine he has to do in order to get his uh, that bonus. The superintendent down in Tom's River determines whether he achieved it or not. I, I, don't, I, don't he know doesn't, you, he, I don't know if you were here at that meeting when I asked that question about why were we using those things and the response I got from the superintendent was that was we were going with the recommendations of the county superintendent. That was his exact words. Well, we're I'm going with the recommendations of the county superintendent. I'm not the school board. If I may, mm -hmm. it's not recommendations. They're samples that could be used, and I said I tweaked those into meeting with our initiatives in our district. Secondly, if you look at the new bills that are out, the legislators also dictate, because there's a bill out that says you cannot use merit pay for the superintendent on students that are special education going out of district to keep them in district. I purposely stayed away from that because I agree with that. 
But I don't make that decision. That's the legislators doing it. And Sweeney's the one sponsoring the bill. So there's a lot that goes on from the state all the way on down. But those are goals that I'm for. Me, as a taxpayer in Brick, pay me what I'm justifiable to, to be paid for and not freeze my salary when everything else around me is going up and after putting 43 years in. So yes, my merit pay I feel I deserve. Thank you. I didn't freeze your pay. <laughs> exactly right. Well, that's why I will fight for my merit pay. Right. My point was, who picked it? Uh, one other quick question, and my memory really bad on this one. Has bereavement always been four days for immediate family, or was it three? Immediate, I, to, my, to my knowledge, uh, Mr. Mr. Finelli, to my knowledge, it's been four. Okay, Mr. Edwards is saying five. At one time it was five. It was actually a couple of years ago. The board reduced it for unaffiliates to four. All right, I wasn't involved at that. I think you were here. What, what but, yeah. but it's yeah. been yeah. four. Standard was five. Was five and and we, got I've been we got matched to the BTA contract. It's been four all along. Where five came from, but it went down to four. Okay, I was on that board. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, four. Just so you know, the national standard in business is three. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes, sir. Bring it down uh, John Sluka, 950, Sylvia Court. Uh, I actually didn't have a question until uh, I just, again, with these raises. Uh, Merrick increases I love. But I love also never raising the base salary. So the base doesn't rise each year or every contract. The base stays the same. The merit increase is by what you do. So you can get higher and higher merit increases, but your base never goes up. No. And you can't, to me, no. you don't have both of them. You only have one or the other in no. most cases in private business. I know in no, public, a lot of times we. Merit pay doesn't go up. What? Merit pay doesn't go up, it stays the same. Your base salary goes up? No. no. Well, I wasn't saying to you, but anybody. No, but I'm just saying, you said right. merit goes up. It doesn't go up. The merit doesn't go up only Well, if you get a merit increase of 5% this year, then you get 5%. So it's a merit increase. If, if you make it, that's correct. If but you make base stays the but same. But the base stays the same every year. So. That's what I'm saying. So I'm for it. And Mr. Finelli said he wasn't. I'm for it as long as the base doesn't don't increase. No, it doesn't. That's what I was right. saying. Uh, also, one thing over here, I thought I saw in retirements again, it always confuses me. We allow retirements in the middle of years, with middle of school years, even though it's at the end of the year. I can never understand why it's December 31st when school ends like December 23rd. It seems like we pay a week and a half for the sake of paying a week and a half to people who aren't working. Not all the time, because some people do work during that period of time. But it, it just seems like there's, and again, it's only a small amount of money, but small amounts over and over and over again become larger and larger amounts. Okay, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other Point. questions? Thank you. So, you know, just to clear some, clarify on the uh, on the cafeteria, it's what they call an enterprise operation. Uh, so it can make a profit for the school district. So if you put a, I know uh, some people don't think we understand math, uh, but if you increase the profitability by a hundred thousand dollars and you give a three thousand dollar merit raise, uh, you know, we think that that makes good mathematical sense. So that's what we're trying to accomplish there. That's what he said. I agree. Okay, no other questions from board members? Okay. Mrs. Carey? Mr. Talton? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes, on items 1 through 17. Abstain on Dan O'Cone. On item 18, yes to Teresa Goodfellow. And yes, uh, number 19 to 22. Ms. Cusinelli? Yes. Mr. Panucci? Yes to all, um, but I'm going to abstain on number 10's mechanic helper only because it's a new position and, you know, just trying to do a little last minute research on it tonight. Ms. Suter? Um, no on number 20 for the simple fact I don't agree with the contract, nothing against a candidate, and yes on everything else. Mr. Reed? 
Uh, yes, on everything except uh, the uh, added mechanics helper number 10. Um, no on that? No on that. Ms. Cantilla. Yes. Uh, I, ha I have two candidates that I could like to introduce to the board, if that's okay. Absolutely. Uh, Yamila Gordon is our new payroll clerk. Welcome, Yamila. Mm -hmm. And, and Janine Richardson is our new manager of exactly. food services. Go right down the line. Go right down the line. Okay, and also Mr. Cohn, Vice Principal, and Tiffany, Special Ed, welcome. Is, is Mrs. Goodfellow here? Ah, there you are. <laughs> welcome. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, I, I just want to point out with these two picks, you have Dan O'Cohn, who's been a, a solid teacher in the district for the last eight years. You have Ms. Goodfellow, who's been in the district since 94. These picks send a good message out to the community and the school district that, you know, not just put your time in, but if you're a good teacher, you can rise up. And I just wanted to point that out. And also on the retirees, uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick from Vets Middle School. Yeah. I just want to say I have a lot of fond memories of her. She yelled at me a lot of times for spelling <laughs> stuff on my keyboard in technology class. But I want to wish her the best of luck as well. And, and to add to Mr. Panucci with Ms. Patrick, I think I died of dysentery multiple times on the Oregon Trail when I was in school and probably got <laughs> yelled at that too. We got yelled at a lot. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> Congratulations on your retirement. Do I have any other board comments? I have a comment. Yes. Um, I just wanted to um, acknowledge a few people. Um, I wanted to thank Mrs. Biancella, who is a guidance counselor here at Brick Township High School, and the staff here um, for putting on another Alumni Network Day. Um, if any of the board members ever have, are you, if you're ever available the day before Thanksgiving, because it's always that morning, um, it really is a nice morning to hear our former students come back and tell us about their college experience. Um, so she did a great job coordinating all that. I also wanted to mention and thank Mr. Heitman, Mrs. DeCondi, Dr. Anderson, Mrs. Tompkins, as well as all of the Lake Riviera staff um, that put on the production of The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. But I especially want to mention the performers and the crew. It was such a wonderful, wonderful production. It was a great afternoon, and they did a fabulous, fabulous job. So I wanted to acknowledge them. And I also I wanted to thank um, the board members, um, but especially Dr. Uzinski, um, for hiring another structured learning experience teacher in Tiffany. Um, I think Mrs. Novick has done a fabulous job, and I think with the help of Tiffany, I'm sorry, I don't want to like totally mess up your last name. Um, but I think we're going to really um, be able to help a lot more of the special ed students. So I thank you so much for doing that. And have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Enjoy your break. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Souter. Anyone else? Mr. Tolkien? Yes. Uh, um, I see that Mrs. LaRusso is here. So I, I would like to let the people know that I, I, I was hearing a lot of rumors about how bad the basement was at Osmondville School. So I went over there, and Miss, Mrs. Goodfellow is the one I met first, and she took me and got me into the, into the school, and Mrs. LaRusso took me on a personal tour, and I can assure you that that building is completely safe. The workers did a great job of, of, uh, of uh, fixing that school up. 
and I just want to thank you for taking the time to take me around. Uh, and I'd also like to wish everybody a blessed and happy uh, Christmas. Thank you. Ms. Nelly? Um, again, I just wanted to not only congratulate the state championship football and gymnastics teams, but I think that really there's a, a good lesson for all of us, whether we're students in school or as adults, that what all these kids and their coaches did was they set a goal, they made a commitment to that goal, and they worked hard to attain that goal. And I really think that, you know, especially as we have uh, New Year's resolutions coming up, that's really something that they should be proud of and we should admire in, in them, and that's something that's a, a role model for all of us. Also, I would like to really thank wholeheartedly the technology department and Mrs. Keating and Dr. Yuzinski and all the people who worked to get that uh, district newsletter up. Uh, that's something we've really wanted to do, and I really appreciate all the time and effort that everybody put in for that, and I hope it's something that the public will enjoy. And I just want to also echo uh, Mr. Talty's sentiment, just wishing everybody who celebrates Christmas a very Merry Christmas and uh, all the best to everybody in the new year. Thank you, Mrs. Cusinelli. At this time, Chair, we have a few more. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I want to wish everybody a happy holidays. Also, want to uh, thank all the staff, uh, the administrators, and the teachers for uh, putting their arms around this technology initiative and all the great technology we brought into the district and trying to work that into their uh, curriculum and instruction so that we can achieve better student results. Thank you, Mr. Reed. If I, yes. if I may. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I hope I didn't run out of my, uh, nope. my one we'll, comment we'll there. I can get another one. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it's I just, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas to Mr. Conti here. Uh, I just wanted to uh, mention that, um, one, uh, both Mr. Panucci and I were over at the uh, Gingerbread Social over at Brick Memorial High School, which is run by Ms. Tarnowski and the Key Club. They do an awesome job. Um, and I know that uh, Santa was there, and he is a uh, good, close, personal friend of Mr. Panucci and my Looks son. a lot like my brother-in-law. Yes, and <laughs> my son was over the moon um, to visit him, so that was, it was a great event. And then, um, as Ms. Cusinelli was saying about alumni getting their good news in, um, I happened to go to the Monmouth uh, Binghamton basketball game uh, this past weekend over at Monmouth University. My wife's a Binghamton alum, and so we went up to the game, and uh, a former Brick graduate, uh, Chelsea Barreto, sung the national anthem. She did an absolutely amazing job, and the township should be very, very proud that um, she is there, and also Ms. Cusinelli's daughters sing the national anthem uh, on occasion as well. And then um, a, a friend of mine who is a Brick Memorial graduate is also the director of communications over at Monmouth University, Greg Viscomi, so it was great to see him there too. So uh, talk about good news. Um, those are two individuals that are doing uh, exceptionally well in their positions. Um, one as a student and one as a, an administrator over at Monmouth. Um, so kudos to them. And uh, for everyone, have a very happy and safe and healthy holiday. And look forward to seeing everyone in the new year. And I almost forgot as well, Rick Staten, who was a 1993 graduate of Brick Memorial High School, was just appointed the head women's soccer coach at Seton Hall University, a major Division I program in the country. And it's just nice to be able to throw those things out when our alumni do great things. Thank you. At this time, I'll open it up to the public if anyone has any comments. Yes, sir? Uh, I have a couple things. One is sort of light, so I'll tell you today. Uh, well, let me do the first thing first. Uh, we have robo calls. I'm not sure what happened last week in Lanes Mill School. Uh, some kind of gas leak or something that happened because the kids were outside for like in the cold weather for about 35, 40 minutes, uh, and a note went home to the parents, uh, basically saying they were let out of school. Some of the kindergartners and first graders, obviously, that's what I talk about all the time, seem to think that that might have been a recess or something because they really, most of them didn't know what was going on. But it was kind of cold to be standing there. I know there's not a lot you could do, but who knows? I mean, that was only, people always say, if it's, oh, 
you know, just sort of like they did overseas, oh, well, the thing would have been over anyhow. We don't know that. So do we have a plan in place in case things last a lot longer than that? And the President, may I? Yes, sir. I in the event that it would last longer, there's an evacuation plan to go down to the high school and go into the high school. When, they, uh, when that took place and they went outside, uh, they actually grabbed their coats quickly to go out. But um, then the fire department police were notified, and as soon as the fire department allows us to come back in, because only they could clear it, which they did, then the email blast was put together to be sent out, and hard copies went home besides the email blast, as well as um, this, a letter into the staff's mailbox so the staff knew so everyone knew what was going on. But it was a leak, a gas leak in the boiler room. Okay, and related to that then, I know we get robocalls for things like bonfires, but I'm surprised the robocall wasn't made for that instead of just a letter going home. I, I don't understand what you're talking about. I know, about. it's when we get these calls or texts done for somebody, you know, like a child that, you know, the parents get notified that something's going on, like a bonfire, and you know, they're going to have this bonfire, or they had it today, stuff like that. How come instead of just a note going home in a backpack, we just don't put it on a robocall and tell the parents that way? Wouldn't that be faster and more efficient? I don't know if there was one sent out. I don't even know if one was sent out for that or not. I know... Um, no, I think there was an. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, it did. It went out to the entire community. Yeah. So we got robo call went out to the entire. It's not called robo. It's called an email blast. Email blast through Honeywell system that went out to oh, the and entire it goes to your community. Home phone, it went on our website. It went on the school website. Yeah. It said it did say yes. It said the bonfire, which the police department, which the fire department and the police, they took care of that. We didn't do that. They did all that for us. Right, but then what happened? Why? What, what, my question would then be: Why don't we do the gas leak that way? We did. Oh, we did. Yeah, it went out. Oh, does it go to the house phones, not the whatever you set up? Honeywell is set up for the individual oh, it's a parent okay. to set it up to where you want it to go to. And I'll, I'll explain to, real yeah. fast, if I may, why. There's uh, this happened a few years ago where a gentleman had said called me and said he's getting calls and I'm dealing with a multi-million dollar companies, uh, corporations, negotiations, and I'm getting a call that uh, West Paducah State's Academy is having a cupcake sale. And I told him, I said, well, then you control it. You put down what you want to come. If you want emergency calls only to come to that phone, it will. If you want all calls to come to that phone, that you could do. Yeah. If you want it to go just to your home, if you want it to go be a text message, if you want it to go to give you set it up how you want it, and you can have all calls, just emergency calls, just snow closings, okay. delay. It's, it's up to the individual person to set how they want it, and that's also okay. on the website with the instructions on how to set it and go into it. And, if you and multi ever, multiple phones as well, I guess. Yes. I remember seeing that on there. That's correct. Okay. Anything at all. And it goes through the entire district over, we have, I think, over 12,000 people that are on it because there's some yeah. people that are not in school, and it does it within 90 seconds. Oh, okay. Uh, the other thing is just to welcome everybody uh, to the Brick Invitational Bowling Tournament. They're running the Invitational again this year like they do every year, first Saturday in January. The boys' teams, both schools, are pretty real good. And the girls' teams are rated one and two in the state again. They bowled each other today. Brick Memorial boys won two games, and the Brick won one. And on the girls' side, they also split. Brick won two games, and Memorial won one. And these kids average better than I'll ever dream of. The girls' teams averaged about 970 wow. for five girls. Mm -hmm. And that and the boys' team, two of them, the boys' team, Brick, might have had the highest in years. They had about a 1,200 wow. in one of the games. Holy I mean, that's five people. I mean, monstrous. But uh, so I want to invite, it's, to, it's all day over in Ocean Lanes. So whoever wants to show up can show up because the place is always packed out. You won't park. You know, yeah. and uh, facility manager always gets a call, right, for busing uh, to make sure the buses have somewhere to park because we don't let them be there. Uh, and the, most of the brick teams will bowl in the afternoon. 
but even though they're there all day because they have to open it. What time does it start? 8 o'clock in the morning, ends close to 5 o'clock. But somewhere around 12.30, usually that's when the teams, but the coaches will know because sometimes they will switch them to try to even out the teams. So, But usually they both JV and varsity and that, so they're all there that day, you know, and they're all working, which is great too. We can talk about the kids. Is that, what was the date on that again? Uh, first Saturday, January 5th, 4th, 4th? 3rd, 4th, yes. Is that the Saturday? Yeah. Thank yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Now I'll leave. I want to get Any other board. questions? I'm good news. Mr. Couton, did you say that you had a question? No questions, just comments. I'm sorry, we're taking just comment. I mean, excuse me, no questions, just comments. Oh, Joe's. I thought they were leaving. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin Mosley came out in case we need him. Huh? Kevin Mosley came out just in case we need <laughs> <laughs> Joe Coutan, 241 Arizona Drive, Brick, New Jersey. I just want to make a. Uh, I want to compliment the board, I want to compliment our teachers, and I want to compliment all the principals and vice principals, and they, believe me, every cent that they make, they earn it. I see it because I go around the district, and especially the teachers, I see them stay there late. They put more time in than they should just to help out kids. They teach and they devote their time. A lot of people don't see it, but I do. And I just want to come up here and compliment all the teachers, all the vice principals and principals and supervisors, and also the board and our, our superintendent. I want to thank you very much. You all did a great job. And I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Kutan. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Finelli? Thank you. Be an early night. Well, for my first comment to Dr. Yu, you know why the governor froze your salary at 177,000? So he can get his money. No, he only makes 175. He has 500,000 dollar transition fee when he leaves office. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get a bonus either. Yeah, 500,000 dollars he gets. Um, two two questions. Uh, we're, Mr. Finelli, we're just taking comments. No questions. Comments? Comments. Well, my, my comment or question is something that has to do with not one of the agenda items, but something before it. Since when can't we ask general questions at the well, end of the I meeting? Was, I was made aware, which I wasn't before, but I was made aware that this is a comment section, not a, a question section. And I was sent a notice from New Jersey school boards that this is what this pr part of the meeting is about is comments so I'm trying to abide by what I was told so the, the New Jersey School Board Association is telling you that the general public cannot ask general questions at the end of the meeting so when can they ask the there, general questions well after every section of the agenda you have the opportunity to get up to ask a question on those items but public comment is to make a comment. Okay. And that's what they clarified for. Well, let me try and make my point. Uh, Mr. Parisi gave a, a, a presentation called the performance target of the district. There was no question and answer session after that, so when am I allowed to ask questions about that? I guess you could have asked, could have raised your hand when it was done. I mean, I, if you... I'm following the procedures okay. of only Listen, th that we've you, had for years. I, I, I'm not going to argue with you. If you'd like to ask a question on Mr. Barisi's presentation, I can, I can certainly try to answer it. Well, thank you. 
For months I've been asking when we're going to do a presentation on, on the test results like the New Jersey school performance. Was that the response to my, that was it? Yes, that's the new, that's the new target, performance target that the state has mandated now. That's what they give us. That, 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 well, I'm confused about what a target is and what results are. We'll have to, you can call my office and I'll have Mr. Marisi get what the target is because I don't know that because they're different for every grade level. Well, I'm not asking about the targets. I'm asking about the presentation. Um, but I have, I have, I have, a, I, have a, an, an, I just want to check my understanding, all right? Uh, according to what he said, and I think I understood it, this is calculated so that each subgroup will half the gap between the 2011 proficiency rate and 100% proficiency by 2017, is that correct? No, 90% exceeds, or 50% of partially proficient have to exceed. Nothing, nothing was said about 100%. It's 90 and 50. 90 and 50. 50, you have to increase 50%, so if you have 40, people, 40 students that got partially proficient, you have to get at least 20 of those have to come up. 50% of that to meet your target. Okay. That's the new ratings, how they go now. They're not doing the way, you got to get away from New Jersey Smart because, and um, New, New Jersey Ask rather, because it's not going to be done that way any longer. I'm not quoting New Jersey Ask, I'm quoting the New Jersey Performance Report. Yep. From this year. Well, I'm not quoting the report. I'm, I'm, you asked me about the report that we just gave. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. Now you're talking something different. Well, this is what I've been asking for for, for 11 months. It's right on the website. It's on the state website. But we just got the results, so we can't make a presentation until we have all the results, the targets. You got the results of this back in February, Bruce. No, we did not. I beg to differ. We just got those in. We've got those in a month ago. Well, they just it, came in. How is it that I got them in February? You don't have what we're talking about. That's why I beg to differ with you. We just got the results in. New Jersey asked, they're based on New Jersey asked scores, and we didn't get our scores in until late September. Okay. So we did not get the target, our target performance, until just a few weeks ago, about a month ago. So what you're looking at is what the state's talking about, about target population, but not our specific scores, because we didn't have those yet. That's why Mr. Barisi could not make the presentation. <coughs> so I can tell you. Now, you're more than welcome to come into central office. I welcome to please, and we'll sit down and with Mr. Barisi, and we'll show you what, what reports we get in, because they're stamped in the dated when they come in. Okay. And then all the results go to all the principals. And when they come in, as a matter of fact, the board doesn't even see them yet because when the results come in, they, they tell us it can only be shared with the building principals at that time. Not until such time that they develop everything completely. People have an opportunity to send waivers in, say they don't agree with, there could be errors. You have to check the errors. Then they come out with the final grades and levels for us so that we can then make a presentation on what we get. So it's not something that's just put out there, so here it is. It's, it's a long, and I'd be, please, I'm begging you to come in so we can show you the whole process. Not what you're reading on the, on the state website. We'll show you from September to now exactly what we get and we'll be able to explain it to you and then you'll have a clearer, clearer, concise. I just need an hour with you. I, I, that's how long it takes, but I'll be happy to do that with you and you'll get a clear, concise understanding of how we get in dribs and drabs. And, and I'll show you the letter where it says, don't give this out, don't do this yet, because there could be errors. Okay. That's all I'm saying I, I, I you, but I'll be happy to explain I, it I, to you. I just want to back up and I'll, and I'll say this again and then I'll sit down, all right? Sure. Back in February, and, and I'm not just going on the state website and looking for whatever. Excuse me, no, if I can interrupt, you're saying February. That's February of what? 2013. February. Yeah. And we're now in December. Yeah. Oh, it's a new school year. Okay, go ahead. Well, I've been asking every other meeting since February about when you're going to go over these results. Right? You put a general comment on the website, and I've been asking since February when you're going to go over these results, and they are the results for the school district by school for the New Jersey Performance Report. Okay? 
And, and you would say, you've been telling me when we get all the information, we're going to do it. I asked you a little while ago if Mr. Parisi's presentation was my response, was, was a response to me asking you about this report and when you were going to go over it. And, and, I, and, I, and I read to you the percentage target that's on this report. From, right? let, me respect, it it let me respectfully explain something to you. In February, we had not taken tests yet. When you asked about is that report, that report's based on our New Jersey S scores that are taken in May, April and May. Nothing in February. That would have been the year prior to. I never said it was in February. I said this when I got... We gave that report of the year before. That was done. Mr. Barisi did make that presentation. I'll get that out of the, re I'll get that out of the minutes for you on, on the uh, website from the board meeting where he made a presentation around this time last year, which was for the year before. On this? Yes. What you're asking for, we didn't have scores yet on. We had to wait till the kids took the test in May and June, and now we have the report. And they're new target reports. They, didn't, they just started to come out. They weren't even given to us yet or developed yet in February. They were only telling us information on what's happening with the whole. I, I really don't want to take any more time of everyone. I need you to come in. You need a real clarity and an explanation. I'd be more than happy to show you, because it's going to take time, but I have to show you the whole thing, because you're having one year mixed into the next. You have the testing wrong. You're looking at, you're looking at apples and oranges, and I respectfully would like the opportunity to sit with you, with Mr. Barisi, and we'll show you everything, and you'll really understand, and I apologize for the confusion, because we will show you exactly what's going on. But we don't have any test scores in February yet for, the, for that year. They don't take them to May and June. So I, I apologize, I'm very confused. So if you come in, I can answer, we can sit down and we can discuss it because right now is not the time. Yeah, yeah. You can make whatever well, comments you want. The only one is confused because I don't mind coming in and sitting down with you. But You're the only one asking these questions here. that I could help you with if you want us to come in and sit down with and I'll be more than happy to give you a whole explanation on where the state came from, where it is, where it came from, how it was developed and how you answer your questions. Can I ask you one question? I brought this up at least four times, and I've showed you the report I was talking about, and I gave you the dates that I got it, and I even gave you some of the information on it. And I told you we don't have any information. How much later are you telling me I'm wrong? We don't have any data on that until May and June. That was only results. what... These are results. No. No. That's what I'm saying. You need to come in. I apologize. These are not results? Maybe. Mr. Finley, that was what you're talking about. I, I think I think enough is enough. Okay, I think Mr. You're certainly I think right. Dr. Yuzinski has been gracious to invite you to come in to to explain, and if you'd like to take him up on it, you're more than welcome to do that. But I'm I'm not going to allow this arguing to go back and forth. Okay. I'm glad you know. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else have a comment? Seeing none. December 20th is winter break, early dismissal. December 23rd to January 1st is winter break and schools are closed. January 2nd is our reorganization meeting here at Brick High School at 7 o'clock. And January 20th, Martin, excuse me, <clears throat> Martin Luther King Day, schools are closed. Um, we have no need for an executive session tonight, so can I have a motion for adjournment? Motion. Thank you, Second. Mr. Finucci. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Reed? Reed? Mr. Conti? No, 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 Mr. Reed. It was Mr. Reed. It was Mr. Reed, okay. Mrs. Carey? Mr. Tolte? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Cusinelli? Yes. yes. Mr. Panucci? Yes. Ms. Suter? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Ms. Cantillo? Yes. Good night, everyone, and Merry Christmas and a happy and healthy New Year.